This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It was a true delight to have baseball back in our lives yesterday, all the way from 1 p.m. Eastern until basically bedtime. So that was fun, which kind of makes today a bit more of a come down because there are no games until 6.40 p.m. Eastern and, you know, just five games total. So bit of a bummer in that regard. But still, with just five games, there are still some bets that I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We're going to run through those and then... Also talk about some NASCAR, got the Cup Series and Xfinity Series in Richmond and the Truck Series in Texas. We'll run through all those here today to get you ready for what should be a fun weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to preview Friday's MLB slate, breaking down uh, money lines, strikeout props, and a home run prop I like for today. Talking about those and also talking again about NASCAR across this weekend. If you are here looking for some Final Four discussion, both in the men's and the women's side, those podcasts are already up over on the number fire or the uh, covering the spread podcast feed. So if you want a men's breakdown from Dr. Ed Fang, a women's breakdown from Justin Carter, find those by searching for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. We appreciate those of you who have done so already. Also, these podcasts do go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball, must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877- Eight hope and wire text hope and why and in west virginia go to 1-800-GAMBLER.NET now let's take a look at major league baseball for today and to start the season off i am running two separate money line models they're effectively the same thing but one more aggressive kind of assuming that the rule changes don't change a whole lot from last year to this year whereas the other one bakes in a bit more volatility so kind of running both to see which one um, which one is going to give me a better read early on the year. The way that I want to play things is identifying spots where both money line models agree there is value on a game. I'd rather play things a bit safe like that early on when my confidence in the model is a bit lower. There is one game across tonight where I am showing value over a FanDuel Sportsbook, and that is the White Sox and the Astros. I like the Astros money line, which is minus 146 right now. Now, I would mention this number has moved. Uh, the, as the White Sox or the Astros, rather, were minus 162 earlier on today. That is now minus 146. So clear some interest in the White Sox here. But as of right now, the implied odds, 59% uh, for the Astros to win. The less aggressive model has them at 65%. So I'm showing value and people disagree. So I would hold off on betting this maybe, you know, see where the market goes. It's 146 now. If you open up your sportsbook app and see it's minus 140, maybe keep holding off, seeing if you can get a better number later on. But I do think that 146 is a good number and one that I would like to get, despite the fact it seems like people out there do disagree. A lot of this is because I have faith in Christian Javier. He was awesome down the stretch last year, especially 
when he started leaning on his slider more, and that's good for strikeouts. Sliders are a great pitch for that. But for Javier specifically, it was also great for hard contact. His hard hit rate allowed in those 12 outings with more sliders was just 32%. That's a very good number for a guy who is leaning quite a bit on a slider. He's facing the White Sox here. Their active roster last year, a 95 WRC plus against righties, a 132 ISO. So Javier does let up a lot of fly balls, but they don't tend to be that well struck. And this offense against righties, not super powerful. So I feel good about the Astros despite their loss last night, despite the way the market has moved here. I'm willing to bet them at minus 146. But again, try to get a read on this market. Try to look around, see what other books have on the on the uh, Astros here get a read on that, but I do think that uh, minus 146 is a good value for the Astros right now. I also like a strikeout prop in this specific game, and you know, if I'm on the Astros money line, it makes sense that the bet I'm looking at is the under on Lance Lynn. Now, right now, over at FanDuel Sportsbook, under 6.5 is minus 160. This is bounced all around this morning. It was minus 146. Uh, then it moved to Minus 136, and apparently some money is coming back on the under, so it's back down to minus 160, which means you are paying a pretty hefty penny to take the under here. Um, The implied odds at minus 160 are 61%. So I can understand if you want to shop around and look elsewhere to see if you can find a better number on that, but I do think that the under is still in play here, despite it being minus 160, but I understand if you want to step off. Uh, I have Lynn projected for 5.2 strikeouts, which is why I'm so okay laying a bigger number on the under at 6.5. It's pretty well below that number. Last year, for whatever reason, Lynn was not as big of a strikeout guy as he had been previously. He did cut back on his sinker usage over his final 10 starts, and when I see that, I typically think it's in an effort to increase strikeouts, but even then... Lynn's strikeout rate was just 24%. We saw him pitch in the WBC, which likely means he stretched out. I wouldn't worry about pitch count here in terms of uh, if you want to bet the over, but he is facing the Astros. He is on the road. Uh, The Astros active roster, a 19% strikeout rate last year versus righties. And when you combine that with my thoughts in the money line, these bets play well together. Now you can't combine them in a same game parlay over on FanDuel because uh, they mesh too well almost almost um but i do think that individually they are good bets so lynn minus 160 uh that uh, that is a lot again 61 percent implied odds on that or 62 percent implied odds to round up um that is a lot to pay so between the two despite the way the market has moved i would prefer to go with the money line on the astros at uh minus 146 but i do think there is value on lynn at uh under six and a half at minus 160 as well now As we discussed last year here on the show, I don't typically do a lot of home run props. I tend to leave that to Tom Vecchio, uh, DFS underscore Tom, because he does a great job with those. But there is a home run prop I like for today, and that's Colton Wong at plus 750 for the Mariners uh, taking on the Guardians. And Wong is not like a huge power guy, not regarded as being such, but he's facing off uh, with Hunter Gaddis. Hunter Gaddis in the minors last year, led up a massive fly ball rate. And when he came to the majors for a very small sample, led up a lot of hard contact there as well. That could get better this year for sure. I mean, he's, he made the guardians rotation for at least now. So I think that we could potentially see maybe he steps up, maybe he improves this year, but Wong improvement last year for him too, uh, versus righties. His ISO last year was two eleven. That was uh, his career high against righties by a pretty good margin. His 39.8% growl ball rate was also his lowest, and he doesn't strike out a whole lot. So should put the ball in play. Did so with better authority last year. He had 14 home runs against righties, so it's not like Wong went bananas or anything, but he is capable of going yard. We saw Wong hit second last night, which means right behind Julio Rodriguez uh, at a pretty good spot in this order. I like that setup. So... I'm not going to do home run picks every day here on the show, uh, especially if we have a larger slate where I can talk about more money lines, talk about more strikeout props. Only one of each for today, though. So not super often we'll dive into the home run prop market, but I do like this one. Colton Wong at plus 750 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. So if you're looking for some baseball bets for today, day number two, like the Astros money line, minus 146, Lance Lynn, under six and a half strikeouts, minus 160, and then Colton Wong at plus 750, Uh, to go yard for the Mariners. That's going to wrap up baseball for today. 
But let's talk about some NASCAR because it's a fun weekend in NASCAR because we've got uh, the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series over in Richmond. The Truck Series is in Texas, and I do think there are some good, decent value bets in all of those. On the Cup Series side, I'm showing value in only a couple of outrights, and those outrights are um, on Joey Logano, who struggled quite a bit in Phoenix, and Ryan Blaney, who is terrible in Richmond. So I'm okay vetoing my model and saying, I'll pass. Thank you very much. But in the top 10 market, I think we can find a pretty good amount of value there. Now, what's interesting is that most of the value I see is on studs, really good drivers with very short odds. And that can be scary because in order to profit more, you need to put more on it. Uh, but I think that with how low chaos, how little chaos there is in Richmond, I do feel like that distribution that uh, that chaos factor is being underaccounted for in the top 10 market specifically. So the guys I'm showing value on right now, Kyle Larson, minus 240 at FanDuel Sportsbook, Kevin Harvick, minus 230, Denny Hamlin, minus 230, and then Joey Logano at minus 160. I will take Logano top 10. I'm just having a harder time talking myself into uh, the win bet at 14 to 1. Now, looking at these guys specifically, I've got Larson's... Um, Top 10 odds around 74%. His implied odds at minus 240, close to down to 70%. It's not a huge gap there, but it is enough. And um, with Kevin Harvick, his top 10 odds here are 74% as well. Same for Hamlin. Uh, and the implied odds for Harvick and Hamlin, 70%. As for Logano, implied odds of minus 160 are 61.5%. I've got him pretty well above that. So though, again, my model is admittedly too high on him. So it is a bit odd, but... It's just really hard to turn down the way things shake out here. And we look at these four drivers specifically. They are four drivers on big teams, typically successful teams, less so with Harvick and Stuart Haas Racing, but uh, with Larson, Harvick, and Hamlin, all three of those guys, very good at Phoenix, the only race we've seen so far in this lower downforce package, non-road course edition. They were all very good there. Larson and Harvick battling out for the win. Uh, Hamlin ran well the entire day, had issues on the final restarts, and then Rex Ross Chastain, but he was very fast there. Logano was not fast there, but typically does run pretty well at Richmond. So you get guys on good teams at a track where the good teams tend to rise towards the top. There is minimal chaos. These guys outside of Logano ran well in Phoenix. I think it all adds up really well. You look at these guys' historical top 10 rates and relevant equipment, and outside of Larson, they've got top 10 rates around 80 to 85%. So when their implied odds are 70, 74%, or 70%, or for Logano, 61%, I do think it makes a lot of sense. As far as outrights, I'll probably be holding off there until we get uh, some data from practice on Saturday, assuming we get practice in on Saturday. Um, but I think that the place I'd want to go right now is the top 10 market. So again, spots I like for the NASCAR Cup Series of Richmond, uh, Larson minus 240, Harvick minus 230, Hamlin minus 230, and then Logano at minus 160. On the Xfinity Series side of things, again, also Richmond, there is one outright that I like here, and that is on Cole Custer, who is 10 to 1 to win Richmond over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Custer was pretty good on this track type in the cup series is probably, I would argue his best track type. And we saw Stuart Haas racing be fine at this track type with Riley Herbst and Herbst I, I, is not as talented. I wouldn't say as Custer, he's shown improvements at times, but I think that Custer is a better driver. So if they were okay with Herbst on this track type, they should be really good with Cole Custer. Now he does have very tough competition. My model loves John Hunter Nemechek, 17% win odds. Sammy Smith, 12% win odds. He was awesome at Phoenix. Justin Allgaier is at 13%. So it is tough, uh, but I have Custer at 11.2% to win versus implied odds at 9.1% at 10 to 1. So I will take that edge. And I'm fine betting Cole Custer outright at 10 to 1. If you want some non-outrights, I would also check out Brandon Jones' top five odds. Uh, you can find him at William Hill, plus 275. He did struggle at Phoenix, which is disappointing because I was on him there as well. But I like him. Team's pretty good as well, junior motorsports. So for Jones, it's harder for me to see him topping guys like Nemechek, Smith, other Smith, uh, Custer. But for a top five bet, I think he's okay there. So plus 275, the number on uh, Brandon Jones to finish top five. And I do think that is a fine one as well. In the truck series, also an outright that I like there, and it's actually on the favorite. Zane Smith 
is plus 320 at FanDuel Sportsbook, but I've got him at 27.6% to win versus implied odds of 23.8% to win. The reason that I'm very high on Zane Smith here is because A, there are no cup drivers in this field. B, there are no Xfinity drivers in this field, like John Hunter Nemechek. It's just the truck drivers. And Zane Smith is, by my numbers, pretty much the runaway top guy. He has run seven races on mile and a half tracks since the start of last year. Here are the average running positions for Smith in the five races he has finished in that time. The, the average running positions have been second, fourth, sixth, first, and fifth. And there were some cup drivers in a decent number of those fields. So Smith is, in my eyes at least, a monster. It's a very good driver and has insane upside. I do like Ty Majeski a lot. Uh, he ranks second in my win sims, around 12%, but he's plus 450 to win. I think that's a bit too close to what Zane Smith. I think there's a bigger gap between those two guys than what the bookmakers are showing right now. I love Smith at plus 320. It does feel short for sure, but I think that it's a good number. So Zane Smith plus 320 to win. Cole Custer, 10 to 1 to win in the Xfinity series. And then the top 10 bets on Harvick. Hamlin, Larson, and Logano on the uh, Cup Series side, and maybe we'll be able to add in uh, some outrights after we see practice. Hopefully, we see practice on Saturday as well. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread across Major League Baseball and NASCAR, but we are back again next week. Monday, I'll be talking about some baseball once again. Should have a more robust slate there. Tuesday, the Masters. Brandon Gadula will be back with us talking about the Masters. We'll spend the full show talking about Augusta, talking about various props you can bet for uh, the Masters and much more. Actually, Monday, sorry, I misspoke. We're talking about the National Championship game on the men's side with Dr. Ed Fang. He'll be with me in the morning, so we'll get that up pretty early for you, hopefully before 10 a.m. Eastern, so you can listen to that uh, and get ready for um, the National Championship game that night. And then Augusta and the Masters will be with uh, on Tuesday. More baseball coming your way on Wednesday. Make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to get those right as they go live to make sure you get uh, the best odds, you can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets and with your NASCAR bets. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again on Monday for the National Championship. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.